Hello and welcome to Study Topics. This week we will be reviewing arterial blood gas analysis. This is an often really confusing area of practice for a lot of students and PT Exam Prep has created a six step approach to help you with those questions. All right, let's go through the six steps to our ABG analysis. The first step involves looking at the pH and determining if it is within normal limits. If it isn't, we then need to determine if it is high or low and label it as either acidic or alkaline. The second step involves looking at the carbon dioxide level and determining if it is within normal limits. If it isn't, we then need to determine if it is high or low and label it as either acidic or alkaline. The third step involves looking at the bicarbonate level and determining if it is within normal limits. If it isn't, we then need to determine if it is high or low and label it as either acidic or alkaline. We then need to match either the carbon dioxide or the bicarbonate to the pH to determine the primary source of pH abnormality. In step five, we need to determine if the carbon dioxide or the bicarbonate go in the opposite direction of the pH to indicate compensation. And finally, step six, we need to look at oxygen levels and see if they are normal or low, indicating possible hypoxemia. Now, before we run through each of the six steps in our ABG analysis, it's important to recognize that in order to identify abnormal levels, you need to know your normal values first. The normal range for pH is 7.35 to 7.45. The normal range for partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 35 to 45. The normal range for bicarbonate is 22 to 28. Normal range for partial pressure of oxygen is 80 to 100. And normal levels for oxygen saturation as measured using a pulse oximeter is 95 to 100. All right, moving into our six step approach. So first, is the pH normal? Remember normal is pH is 7.35 to 7.45. If the pH value falls below 7.35, it is abnormal and indicates an acidic environment. If the pH value falls above 7.45, it is abnormal and indicates an alkalotic environment. So once you know your pH value, and if it is acidic or alkalotic, label it. Second, is the carbon dioxide level normal? Remember, normal CO2 levels is 35 to 45. If the CO2 value falls below 35, it is abnormal and indicates an alkalotic environment. If the CO2 value falls above 45, it is abnormal and indicates an acidic environment. So once you know your CO2 value, and if it is acidic or alkalotic, label it. Thirdly, is the bicarbonate level normal? Remember, normal bicarbonate level is 22 to 28. If the bicarbonate value falls below 22, it is abnormal and indicates an acidic environment. If the bicarbonate value falls above 28, it is abnormal and indicates an alkalotic environment. Once you know your bicarbonate value and if it is acidic or alkalotic, label it. Now onto the fourth step. Here we need to match either the CO2 or the bicarbonate with the pH to determine the primary source of pH abnormality. So for example, if in steps one through three, you noted that both the pH and the CO2 values matched, both were labeled acidic, you know that the primary source of pH abnormality is respiratory in nature. In this case, it would be a respiratory acidosis. However, if in steps one through three, you noted that the pH and the bicarbonate values matched, both were labeled as alkalotic, you know that the primary source of pH abnormality is metabolic in nature. In this case, it would be a metabolic alkalosis. For step five, we need to determine if compensation has occurred. Here we wanna look at the value that we have not matched up with the pH and see if it has moved outside of normal range in the opposite direction of the pH to indicate compensation. So let's say, for example, we've gone through steps one through four. We have noted that CO2 is high and we have labeled it as acidic and it matches the low pH, which has also been labeled as acidic. So we've concluded that we have a respiratory acidosis. 
It is in within step five where we need to know, we need to now look at the bicarbonate level to see if this system has started to compensate. So if we note a normal bicarbonate level, it would indicate that no compensation has occurred. And we would call that uncompensated. If, however, that bicarbonate is out of normal range into the opposite direction of the pH, so in this case, it would be a high bicarbonate level, which is alkaline in nature, then we have evidence of compensation from the metabolic system. Now, compensation can be partial or full. Partial compensation is noted when the opposite system, so the metabolic system in this example, is outside of its normal range in the opposite direction of the pH, but that pH is still outside of normal range. So that system, in this case, the metabolic system, has started to compensate, but it's only partially compensated. Once the pH is brought back into normal range, then you have a situation of full compensation. Finally, in step six, we evaluate the partial pressure of oxygen and or oxygen saturation levels. You should know that your norms for each of these, and if they are below normal, then it's evidence of hypoxemia. Now, let's put this all together in a practice scenario. So, we have a situation here where pH is 7.22, CO2 is 58, bicarbonate is 25, and PaO2 is 65. Let's go through our six steps. So we look at pH, pH of 7.22, that is less than 7.35. So we have a low pH indicating an acidic environment. So we would label that as acidotic. Our carbon dioxide is 58. 58 is a high level. Remember, 35 to 45 is our normal range. A high CO2 creates an acidic environment, so we would label that accordingly. And already we're seeing a little trend here that the, the cause of the problem is probably our respiratory system. But let's continue. Bicarbonate levels are 25, so that's normal. Remember, bicarbonate is 22 to 28. We have that within that normal range, indicating that no compensation from the metabolic system has occurred yet. And then our PaO2 is low. It's less than 80, indicating hypoxemia. So in this situation, our CO2 matches our pH. We have a respiratory acidosis. Our bicarbonate levels are normal, indicating no compensation has yet occurred through the metabolic system. And our PaO2 is low, indicating hypoxemia. So we have a situation of uncompensated respiratory acidosis with hypoxemia. Now, practice. So we're gonna have three practice questions for you guys. I'm gonna bring each one up onto the screen for about one minute. I challenge you to try to answer these practice questions on your own, going through those six steps as we just discussed. I want you to determine what's the primary source of the pH abnormality. Is there compensation or not? So this is great practice for you guys. So I'll bring the first question up and you'll have 60 seconds to try this one out. All right, question number two, 60 seconds.
All right, and question number three, your final question. All right, want to know if you answered those questions correctly? Click on the link below and we'll email you a video with all of the answers. All right, I hope you found this video helpful and are now better prepared to analyze your ABGs on either your practical or your written exam. And don't ever hesitate to reach out if you have any questions about any of our courses. We're always here to help. Happy studying.